Yeah, let's remember you're unspoken. Yes. How's Brother Lynn? Can, can you give a report? Is that okay? Yeah. So let's remember Brother Lynn Neese uh, in the hospital. And uh, let's remember Brother Sister Kathy as she's home. Uh, both battling COVID, so let's do remember this. Remember the family, too. I'm sure you are a nervous wreck over that. So, Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yes. Just remember that. I was talking to Brother Steve. Uh, I's been, well, when our food truck come around, I guess, Brother Steve, and I, I said, it seemed like you all been here forever, and they've only been here just a few months, few weeks. So. It just seemed like you fit in so good, so we're, we're happy for that. Anyone else have a request or praise this morning? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Just remember this family. Remember Carl Gentry, uh, brother Carl's in the hospital, uh, having some uh, gallbladder issues, uh, and possibly either have his gallbladder out tomorrow or Tuesday. Uh, maybe a, proce- a procedure today or tomorrow, and then the gallbladder removal to follow a day after. Uh, so please remember him. He's in Franklin Woods. Uh, let's remember uh, Brother Gary and Sister Kay. Let's remember them as well. Uh, just in a lot of severe pain yesterday, and about 6.30, I guess they took him to the, the emergency room, about 6.30. So, Anyone else? Well, I heard that, but I, I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to say. Okay. Let's, let's remember the Stockton family. Uh, Brother Rogers uh, pastored out at Greystone for probably close to 20 years, I guess. Uh, and uh, so let's do remember that family. Remember that church as well. Yes, Brother Sam. Let's do remember this. Did you say their last name was Trivet? Tri- Trivet? P. P. Okay. P. Did I see Brother Tim? Let's do remember that. Remember Miss, Mrs. Gaskins. Is that the funeral that I helped you with? Okay. Anyone else? All right. Yes, let's remember that. Well, that's a that's a pr- that's a precious request right there. That really is. If there's no others, brother C.L., would you mind to lead us this morning, please? Hey, yes. Amen. Amen. Well, there's Brother Brother E. G. and Sister Faye. It's good to see you all in here. Good deal. Genesis chapter four, please. Genesis chapter four. Does sin move quick? Let me, let me back that up. Maybe I need to rephrase that. 
once you decide to go down that road, and I believe everyone makes that decision uh, because, you know, the Bible teaches us that he's given us a way out of all temptation, right? Uh, but once we decide to go down that road, uh, doesn't sin just uh, destroy and destructive? Uh, I like to watch the Weather Channel. Do you all? I'm, I'm not talking, you know, like these uh, big things on avalanches and Discovery Channel. And they show all this stuff on avalanches. You know, it may start out with a, uh, a ball of snow, you know, maybe this big. But the time it gets down to the mountain, you know, it's, it's a ball of snow that could cover this whole eight, eight acres, you know, that our church sits on. Uh, that's exactly the way sin is. And that's exactly what happened to Cain's life. Uh, he, it wasn't the decisions necessarily that he made, but it was the attitude that he had about the decisions that was made. Uh, and, and let's look. I, I don't want to you know, take much time. I want to make sure we get everything covered. And I'm real good about taking, chasing rabbits. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, read. Uh, Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 9, uh, with the Lord being our helper here. And it says, Adam knew Eve and his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she, uh, and she again bare a son, Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And, and in a process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruits of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel... He, he also brought the, the firstlings of the flock and the, fat, and the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art, why, why art thou wroth, and why art thou countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be uh, his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the fields, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. And one of the famous phrases in the Old Testament, in verse 9 there on the ladder, verse 9, and it says, Am I my brother's keeper? Father, we ask today, Lord, your blessing, Lord, to be upon this reading, and Lord, upon this lesson, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, how many of us have seen sibling rivalry I see it every day. I see it every day. Uh, well, I've got to do this, and he didn't get to do that, or I, that's my chair. You know, I've been sitting there for this long, and I come in here, and now he's sitting in my chair. He's, and it's just over and over and over again. Now I know some sibling rivalry is to be expected. That's just the way it is. Uh, you know, that's just, uh, for instance, uh, Maybe this is, uh, well, I enjoy it. I wouldn't say it's childish, but I enjoy this. Uh, I make sure that I'm the first one to call my mom and dad on Mother's Day, Father's Day, and on their birthday. And I'd say, you let the girls know that uh, I was the first ones to wish you happy Mother's Day or happy birthday. Now, you know, and, and, and every once in a while, they'll get up early enough to, to do the same, uh, but it's very, very, very few uh, so, you know, that's fun, sibling, but this right here took it to the whole next level. And, and I believe with everything that's in me, and as I stand here today, sin will always take you to that level that you don't want to be at. Sin will always cause you to make decisions that you said you'd never make. Sin would always draw you to that next level that would allow destruction to fall upon your heart and upon your mind. But let's look here today as we see. Uh, Cain's, Cain, the hope of his parents. Cain, the hope of his parents. Now, I can remember 
uh, when Brandy was expecting Emily, we were excited. We didn't know anything enough to be scared. By the time Bryson came around, I said, this is the last one we're not going to have anymore. I was so nervous time the last one come around. Uh, by the time Emily come around, or Bryson come around in the mornings, I'd have to eat saltine crackers just to sit on my stomach. And Brandy, she was just as happy as could be. I said, no more. We're not having none. Uh, my nerves is, is it shot. Uh, but I can remember bringing Emily home. And so excited. We were, the nerves really wasn't there. Uh, you know, it was, we were just so much joyful uh, and, and so, so glad uh, that the Lord had blessed us with that. And I don't think the responsibility really sunk in as heavy as what it did until she got just a little older. And I seen that everything that she needed, we had to provide right? You know, there for so long, the excitement and the joy, you know, the something new just kind of uh, overshadowed everything. And then when that kind of, I wouldn't say wore off, but when that kind of, you know, left a little bit, then we realized everything that she needs, I have to provide. Not just in clothing and not just in diaper changes and not just in formula and not just in housing needs, but Emotional needs, too. You know, I think that we was a textbook parent. We would wake her up just to feed her. What were we thinking? And we would try, and we would do everything by the textbook, and poor Emily, all she wanted to do was eat. And if we had just gave her some cereal like in her milk like we did Bryson, uh, she'd probably been better off, and we would have had more sleep. But we were excited. You know, we were, this, was, this was a new generation that we were responsible for. And I see that with Adam and Eve. This is a new generation that they're responsible for. This is a new generation that they... And, and this is the Cain. Uh, Cain means gotten. G-O-T-T-E-N. Gotten. You know, it, the Hebrew text, you know, if we were to uh, use the Hebrew text in this, it literal transma- translation means, I have gotten the man. That's what Cain means. I have gotten, he says, I have gotten a son. They were excited. Parenting is a massive, I, I use, don't use that word a whole lot, but parenting is a massive responsibility to pass along our faith to the next generation. It is. Well, you say, preacher, you know, I don't have any children. Well, just, just hang on for a moment. There's been two, two families in my life and in, in my parents' life and in, in my sister's life that did not have any children, but they sure raised an awful lot of children. They never had any children themselves. They didn't adopt, but their home was always full. My, my, my parents had a great aunt and uncle. My, my dad had a great aunt and uncle that was more like a grandparents to them. And they only lived about a block and a half away from their house. Maybe, well, about two blocks, I guess, away from the house. And when they wasn't at their house, they were at, and even when we got older and grown up or, or, or small, they even babysat us. You know, they made sure that when mom and dad didn't have it or grandpa and grandpa didn't have it, they made sure that it was provided. You know, that's, that, they didn't have any children, but they sure raised a lot of children. I have a great aunt and uncle that never had any children of themselves, but their house was always full with either nieces and nephews or younger siblings. Always. Always full. Every time I go up there, they, my uncle says, you're going to stay here, right? You know, they want, they want people to know that their house is always open and welcome. If there's a need... And if they can take care of it, they would. So not just parents, but mentors. Not just parents, but you you as individuals, Christians, have a massive responsibility to teach and to train and nurture the younger Christians that come in. Why do you think our church family has been so strong for so long? Even through COVID, I believe our church has weathered very well. 
you know, if you look at our board, that board right there does not depict uh, our attendance at this church. You go out in that parking lot, and there are several people out there, and we just can't count them all. But our church has been strong because of folks like many of you all that have nurtured young Christians like me. You all were nurtured by someone else, and now you're nurturing someone else. You see what I'm talking? It's, it's a responsibility that we have to teach the next generation about our heavenly reward. We see here today in verses 3 through 7, it's talking about Cain's ineffective worshiper. Cain was an ineffective worshiper. Let's look at some things here that kind of catches our eye and catches some different things about us. And in 4 through 7, and it says, And Abel, he also brought the fat fatlings of the flock and the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect for uh, Abel and his sacrifice. Now let's back up to Genesis chapter 3 for a moment. Now, do you remember what, uh, what uh, uh, Adam and Eve did after they realized that they were without clothes? They made themselves fig leaves. What they were doing was ineffective. No matter what you do as a lost individual, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of our sins. So you can, you can tuck a Bible under your arm and, and you can put a tie on. I, I wish I'd like to meet the man that made this tie. I really would. You can put a tie on, you can put a nice dress on, you can do everything. But without the blood being applied to your life, it's for naught. It's for nothing. And, and Adam and Eve was about their own wishes. We're going to do this our own way, we're going to do this, and it was not good enough. So you think, and, and I want to believe, I really do, you know, I really want to believe that Adam and Eve would say, you know, I remember in the garden. You know, I remember in the garden when, uh, when, when God would walk with us in the cool of the day, how peaceful it was. I would hope that they would do that. And then I would, they would springboard into, but we made a mistake. You don't have to make the same mistakes we did. And that, don't, that, don't, don't we do that a lot with our children? You know, you don't have to make the same mistakes that we did. This is where, this is where we messed up. You don't have to go here. They could have springboarded over here to say, it was the blood that was shed from those animals that not just clothed us physical body, covered our physical body, but it covered our spiritual body. It covered the sins. I would hope that Adam and Eve would have enough about them to be able to explain to their children, this is the right way. You know, I believe that there's parents in this world today that would love to be able to teach their children the true meaning of right from wrong, but they're ignorant of it. And when I say ignorant, I'm not saying that they're not able to learn. I'm not saying that they're not able to understand. They just don't know, right? I mean, that's what that word ignorant means. You've just never been taught. You, you have no understanding. You're able to understand, but you just have no understanding of it. And I believe that there's parents out there that would love to teach and train their children, you don't have to make the same mistakes that I do, but the church has failed in so many different ways. Even though our church is strong, even though our church is still proclaiming the gospel, even though I believe yet we still drop the ball. And I'm not pointing at anybody but me, the pastor of this church. So I would hope that Adam and Eve would have said, this is where we are. But you always have that one kid. When you tell them you want green, they're going to pick blue. If you tell them the sky's, green, the sky's blue, they're going to tell you it's green. Do you all have anybody like that? So Abel's, came, Abel's excuse me, sacrifice was acceptable. He brought the firstling, the best of what he had. Cain, but Cain, but unto Cain, his offerings was not respectful. Why? Over in the New Testament, again, I'm going to refer to that in Hebrews. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. We have to have that. Jesus Christ is the reason that we have been grafted into the family. 
Jesus Christ, when he said it was finished on the cross, the, the veil was rent from top to bottom. Now, do you all remember a while back when we studied about the tabernacle? And, and that was probably the longest series of messages that I've ever done here. And, 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 and uh, maybe jog it out just a little too long. But the, just the, the, the veil itself was not just a, a shower curtain type veil. You know, you get those shower curtains at the dollar store and, 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 and you just wasted your money, right? That's not, I mean, this was thick, maybe upwards to three feet in thickness. Heavy material that, was, that wasn't ripped from the bottom up, but it was ripped from the top down, proving that it was God that ripped it from the top down. So he, he, he made a way. He said, it's finished. There's no more need of the holies of holies. I have made the greatest sacrifice of all. So with Cain's, it was not. But look at verses 5. Let's look at this very carefully. This right here is the whole problem of the whole thing. It wasn't that he gave the, the, the vegetables or the fruits. It wasn't that he gave that. But it was his attitude about the whole thing. If he would have just said, okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. Now let me go see what I can do, Lord. Show me what I need to give you. God would have had compassion on him, right? Don't we do that from time to time? God say, that's wrong. And we have to back up and say, well, show me what I need to do. Show me where I need to fix it. And Cain was very wroth. In other words, he got angry. And his countenance fell. His attitude was poor. His attitude was not where it needed to be. Now, I can remember when I was about Bryson's age. Brother E.G., did you ever get your boys in the car and really have a talk with them? <laughs> My dad got me in that car. Rode me out in the county. He didn't whoop me that time. But I wish I was. He said, your whole problem that you have is your attitude. Oh, boy, he all over the place. Not in the road, but all over me. That worked for a little while. And then when I got about 16... My attitude again. Boy, he raised me up by the chin of the... And I realized real quick that my attitude needed to change. My attitude need, wasn't the best. You know, the reason that a lot of times that our worship is not what we think it needs to be, it's not because the singing's not where it needs to be. It's not because the Sunday school teacher's not doing his job. It's not because the pastor's not preaching the message that the Holy Spirit gives him. It's not because your neighbor didn't shake your hand. It's because our attitude towards worship is not where it needs to be. And that's exactly what happened to, to Cain. It wasn't that he didn't have what he needed. It wasn't that God wasn't patient with him. It wasn't that God liked Abel better than Cain. That's not it. God's not a respectful of, God is not a respect of a person. In other words, God don't have favorites. But Abel's attitude was in the right place. When Abel went to worship, he was mindful. He was mindful. You know, over in Hebrews chapter 11, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith. He gave it in faith. If Abel or if Cain would have just was a true worshiper. We see here today their attitudes in this act of worship. You know, when it says his countenance fail, it's his countenance fail. You know, if our heart is not in the right place, it won't be long before our hands will do wrong. Let me say that again. If our heart is not in the right place, it won't be long 
into our hands are found doing wrong. We have to be careful. Well, how, do I, how, how am I careful, preacher? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Keep your nose in the Word. Read. Pray. We used to, you know, those old saints, you know, I don't know about you, but my grandparents, my, my dad was the first one to graduate in his family. My mom was the first one to graduate in her family. So I don't know about you, but my grandparents, my grandma only went to school two years. And she started two years late. My, my grandpa went to about the sixth grade, and he had to quit because his daddy passed away, and he was the oldest of his family, and he went straight to work. Both of them moved out at 13 to provide for their families. I don't know about you, but I know an awful lot of older people, and I say that respectfully, that had very little education. Boy, but could they run circles in their prayer life? I don't have a problem with education. I believe I'm going to provide education for my children. If it's trade school, I'm going to send them to trade school. If it's college, I'm going to make sure that they have what they need to go to college. But I believe we put too much emphasis. Well, preacher, I'm just not educated. I don't want to hear it. When we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, God has allowed us to have what we need as it grows within us to nurture and to mature, and to be the Christian that God wants us to be. Do you remember Brother Arwood? I know Alvin and Avon do. Oh, I wish, I wish I could hear him pray just one more time. It's almost like me just talking to C.L. Am I right? Do y'all remember? Some of y'all older ones remember that? Boy, I, I just wish... I wish I could hear Alma Atkins just pray one more time. Miss Alma, boy, she was just as, you've seen my mother-in-law. She was smaller than, shorter than my mother-in-law. She could tell the stories of, of do you all remember the stories of, uh, of the Cold Wars and the, and the turn of the century in West Virginia? Well, her brothers was in that. She told the stories of coal mines and she was... In the late 90s, she was in her 90s. Boy, her stature was very small. But when she prayed, she was a giant. Are you seeing? We have that opportunity, Christian, to pray. And how do we, how do we have that relationship? We just keep doing it. We just and, 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 and who lives with us? Jesus does. So when we talk to him, we talk to uh, our, our, our Heavenly Father, we just talk to him like he's right here. Talk to him. You don't need big words. You just need a heart that says, Lord, here it is. How do we worship him? We worship him in spirit and in truth. If we're not worshiping in Him in spirit and truth, the truth will be revealed. The truth will be revealed. Cain, the murderer of his brother, in verses 8 through 10. Cain, the murderer, uh, in verses 8 through 10. Now, uh, the, famous, the famous quote, uh, probably in one of the famous quotes in the Old Testament is, uh, you know, in verse, verses 9, I, I know not in my, my brother's keeper. Now, that's a message all by itself, right? I mean, we need to be respectful of other people. We need to be concerned about other people. There was no concern in Cain's. Uh, uh, he was wroth. Boy, he just, all he, seen was, all he seen was anger. All he seen was this is this way and this is this way and I'm over here by myself. His attitude was terrible. Now, when we see murder... We see premeditated, right? Premeditated murder would be like first degree. Uh, you know, second degree, uh, you know, and then there's, we every once in a while we see manslaughter. 
Uh, now, you know, there could be other things, as vehicular homicide, there could be other things of that nature. But when it comes to lawyers speaking, there's different grades of, law, uh, of murder, right? Different grades of that. We see here that Cain's sin could definitely be premeditated. Could definitely be. You know, I'm sure that was in, within his heart, he's probably thinking, I'm going to do whatever I can. You know, maybe he had some sort of crude uh, uh, hoe that he was using. You know, maybe, uh, maybe whatever the case is, it was premeditated and it could definitely be tried and found guilty as first degree murder. You know, we see here as we think, God had warned Cain of the possible circum consequences of allowing his anger towards his brother to root down in his soul. Now, I have tried to dig uh, a pecan tree that's this tall. Brother E.G., Brother C.L., if you've got a pecan tree this tall, how tall do you think that taproot is? <laughs> it's pretty deep. It's rooted, right? I mean, it goes way down. You, you just, you, you're, unless you just dig and dig, you're just wasting your time because it, it's, you're just going to kill the tree. We see here today that when we allow the sin to take hold of our soul, it's the same principle that James talks about. It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lusts and enticements. And when the lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin, it, uh, when, and, and, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. It bringeth forth death. So when we see here, we see that his anger got the best of him. We see that uh, his, his, his attitude just started ruling him. His anger started pushing him. He started premeditating. He started thinking about, if I just get rid of him, I don't have to worry about it any longer. And, and then he slew him. And because that he slew him, it rooted down deep in his heart to where he realized that he says, Am I my brother's keeper? Oh. Now, my boys, they can, they, can, they can sucker punch each other all day long. They can waller each other outside. They can chase each other around the house. But if there's somebody else that chased one of them around the house, or if there's somebody else that sucker punched them, We'd have a fight on our hands. The poor boys definitely get their temper from the roaches. <laughs> but that's how brothers ought, siblings ought to be, right? So many times it's not that way. It definitely wasn't that way with Cain. Cain should have thought more of his brother than he thought of himself. God accepts and requires all Christians to have an interest and concern about one another. God requires. Let's not forget that word requires. God requires for all Christians, all days, all time, to have concern for those people around us. Now, you've heard the story in the accounts, and you've heard people say, well, no hurt like church hurt. Does that make sense? Some truth behind it, aren't they, Brother C.L.? Why? Because the devil has a way of working in churches to hurt people and never allow them to come back to church again. Why? Because this is a hospital. 
This is a place where we put our, our, our differences aside and we come in here and we worship our Heavenly Father with one mind and one accord. You know, so we see that the attitude, we see the anger, we see the act, and now we see Cain, the man under judgment. Cain, the man under judgment. We see here in verses 11 through 17. He's wanting to have that understanding. He's wanting to have this. It says, one of the most precious promises in God's Word is found in John, 1 John 1, 9. One of the most precious promises that we have is found in 1 John 1, 9. For if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the greatest promise, right? Well, Brother C.L. agreed with me. <laughs> That's the greatest promise we have. For the wages of sin is death. I'm glad that there wasn't a period in that, that sentence. It said the wages of sin is death, but. That means something's about to change. That word but means the circumstance is about to change. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have a promise. If we continue earning the wages of sin and hell and death, we will end up in everlasting punishment. But if we choose to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, Cain could have said, here it is, I made a mistake, even after the murder. But yet his attitude, sin was so much rooted within him. 